Hey guys, welcome back. I've been talking about skincare on my channel a lot recently, as I'm sure you have noticed, and I've been seeing a ton of comments from you guys asking for a more in-depth video on exfoliating, so that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. The main question I've been seeing is, what is the difference between the different types of exfoliating? Chemical, physical, enzymatic, so that is mainly what we are going to be covering in today's video. What those terms actually mean, what ingredients you want to look for, what products are going to be best for you, and some popular products in each of these categories. But I am also going to go over the basics a little bit first if you're unfamiliar with exfoliating in general. This is going to be a very informational video, so settle in. Before we get into it, any products mentioned in today's video will be linked in the description box down below. And if you are enjoying my skincare content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know if there are any other topics you want to see me cover in a video, but let's get into it. So exfoliating is a key step for optimal skin health. Exfoliation is just simply removing the dead skin cells from the surface of your skin. Exfoliating has a lot of benefits because if you are just leaving these dead cells on the surface of your skin, it can lead to more clogged pores, blackheads, breakouts. Your skin can also appeal dull and rough and fatigued, and exfoliating can also help slow down the aging process. I've talked about exfoliating a few times recently in other videos, so I apologize if I'm being a bit of a broken record, but I just want all of this information to be in one place. So our skin goes through a natural process called skin cell turnover or desquamation. This is the process of our skin generating new healthy cells at the deepest base level of our skin, the epidermis, and the life of that cell all the way up until it reaches the surface of our skin and it dies and essentially flakes off. It's our body's own natural resurfacing process, and this does happen head to toe, not just on your face. So when you are younger, your skin cell turnover rate is very fast. That's why when you look at a baby or a young child, they have, you know, perfect, smooth, beautiful, flawless skin. But as we get older, this process does slow down and this does contribute to the aging process. So our skin needs a little bit of extra help, especially as we get older. So that is where exfoliating comes in. I mentioned in a previous video that exfoliating is kind of like tricking your skin into feeling younger. Now you might be like, okay, so do I only need to exfoliate if I'm older and if I'm concerned with signs of aging? But like I said, exfoliating does also prevent blackheads and dullness and everything like that. So definitely start while you are young. It'll keep your skin looking great in the meantime, but it'll also be preventative for anti-aging as well. Clearing away those dead skin cells also means you'll get the most out of your skincare routine. I personally spend $55 on my night cream, but if you're spending any amount of money on a moisturizer, do you want it to be getting absorbed by those dead skin cells, or do you want it to actually be absorbed by the healthy new cells that are actually going to benefit from it? Hopefully the answer is pretty obvious. <laughs> it's also very important not to over exfoliate though because then you'll begin to damage those healthy cells and it will end up having the opposite effects you want because this will strip your skin, it'll lead to inflammation, and it can also end up making you age faster. So how often you are going to exfoliate is going to depend on what type of product you are using. So let's get into the three main forms of exfoliation. We're going to start off with physical exfoliation because it's kind of the most basic. I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with a physical exfoliant because we've all seen a good old face or body scrub. So physical exfoliant is anything that actually has physical grit or granules in the product. Now these can include anything like sugar, salt, seeds, ground up fruit pits or nuts, jojoba beads, baking soda, rice bran. It's pretty easy to separate physical exfoliants from the rest because you will be able to actually see or feel that little bit of grit in the product. Facial brushes like the Clarisonic and professional microdermabrasion also fall into the category of physical exfoliation. These products should typically only be used once or twice a week and they're always in the form of a rinse off product so either a face scrub a cleanser or a mask now there are some people who are so 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 against any type of physical exfoliation. I'm personally not one of those people. I don't have any kind of bias against them. I do think they have their place, but just like all skincare products, not all physical exfoliants are created equal and there are definitely some that you want to avoid. One of the main points of appeal with physical exfoliants is that you can really feel like they're working. You can massage those granules into your skin and it's honestly really satisfying. You're like, yes, I can feel that this is actually doing something for my skin, which is not necessarily something you will get with other methods of exfoliation. The main thing is that if you are using physical exfoliation, you want to avoid products that contain particles that are too large or abrasive. So sea salt, ground nuts or ground fruit pits. Those are a few ingredients that you typically want to reserve for your body scrubs and not for your face products. It can be hard to get completely even results with a physical exfoliant as is, but when you are using a product that has these larger particles in them, they can actually end up causing little micro tears in the skin, which are not something you will actually see on the surface, but it is something you will notice long term because it is damaging your skin. They say that when you are using products like this, if you look at your skin under a microscope, it looks like you have taken sandpaper to your skin. You also typically 
basically want to avoid physical exfoliation if you do have acne or you are breakout prone because these granules can pick up bacteria and spread the bacteria around and end up making your acne worse. I will talk more about exfoliating with acne in the next couple categories. A lot of people with sensitive skin too often find most physical exfoliants to be too rough on their skin. So a few examples of physical exfoliating products. Now I'm sure we have all heard of the St. Ives Apricot Scrub. I swear this is like the most controversial skincare product ever because so many people absolutely hate it because it is formulated with ground walnuts. People say it is way too abrasive for the skin but then there is a large group of people also who are like I've been using this for 20 years and my skin looks fine. So I wouldn't personally recommend it or use it on myself, but I wanted to mention it because it is definitely like the most well-known face scrub ever. Some other well-known physical exfoliants are the Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion Scrub, the Fresh Sugar Face Polish, the Laura Mercier Flawless Face Polish, Kate Somerville Eradicate, and once again, facial brushes like the Clarisonic are also physical exfoliators. The second category is chemical exfoliation. Chemical is definitely the most complicated category because it is by far the most versatile. Chemical exfoliants come in so many different forms. It can be in cleansers, face masks, peels, leave-on products like toners. You can find it in serums, moisturizers, literally anything. If you want the resurfacing benefits of chemical exfoliation, you can literally find it in any step of your routine. The ingredients that make up a chemical exfoliant are alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids, which you will see abbreviated as AHAs or BHAs. For AHAs, you will typically see glycolic, lactic, or mandelic acids, and then for BHAs, you will see salicylic acid. So AHAs are great for resurfacing the skin. They're really great for like fine lines and wrinkles and hyperpigmentation, whereas BHA actually goes deeper into the pores. So they're great if you are acne prone, blackheads, clogged pores, anything like that. BHA or salicylic acid is actually oil soluble. So that's why you typically see it in a lot of products for oily or acne prone skin, because this means it can actually penetrate and break through your sebum to dive deeper into your pores once again. Sometimes you'll see AHAs and BHAs separately, but a lot of products also do combine both of them. So depending on the concentration and the strength of the chemical exfoliant you are using, some of them can actually be used up to every single day. Chemical exfoliants tend to work for the widest variety of skin types. Anyone can find a chemical exfoliant that's going to be suitable for their skin. So you do tend to get a more uniform and also deeper exfoliation with chemical exfoliating products. One thing that is very important to note is that AHAs do increase your skin's photosensitivity. So that means if you aren't protecting your skin properly, your skin is more susceptible to sun damage. So if you are wearing SPF on a daily basis, first of all, we need to have a talk. <laughs> but it is especially important if you are using products that do contain AHAs. BHAs don't have this problem. I believe they actually kind of block UV rays, but that doesn't mean they are a replacement for your sunscreen, but you don't have to worry about them like you do with AHA. So jumping back to exfoliating, if you have acne, chemical exfoliation is actually highly recommended if you do have acne prone skin because it is non-invasive. It's not going to cause those micro tears and spread around bacteria. Exfoliating is actually very important when you have acne because acne completely throws your skin cell turnover out of whack. It actually means your skin cells aren't naturally shedding like they should be. Typically, if you are breaking out, it's because your skin is retaining those dead skin cells and trapping bacteria underneath in your pores. That's also why if you have acne, you tend to notice way more flakiness and just buildup of dead skin on your face. Now, personally, back when I had acne, I found regular chemical exfoliation extremely beneficial and and even now that I am acne free and I'm just working on fading my hyperpigmentation continuously, I really do enjoy chemical exfoliants. As for examples, there are a lot of popular options like I said. I've actually noticed a huge spike in popularity for chemical exfoliation in the past few years or so, but I've got a couple examples to show you guys of course. So we've got the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting Liquids or the Pixi Glow Tonic. These are both products that you use as a toner. You can also find chemical exfoliants in the form of pre-soaked pads or wipes like the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads or the Dr. Dennis Gross Daily Alpha Beta Peels. Most of the products I'm mentioning in this video are products I have actually tried by the way. Not all of them but most. There are serums like the Drunk Elephant TLC AHA Serum or the Sunday Riley Good Jeans Lactic Acid Serum. Then there are also products like masks or peels that you would typically only use twice a week and you rinse these off. So like the Glam Glow Super Mud, that mask actually contains a blend of six different acids. There's also the Ren Glam Glycolactic Radiance Renewal Mask, which is really fantastic. I'm just really skimming the surface here because there are so many products to explore. And 
like I said, you can find chemical exfoliation in any step of your routine. So if you want it in your cleanser, you can look up chemical exfoliating cleanser and you will definitely find a number of options. And finally, we have enzyme-based exfoliants. This is definitely a lesser known category. Some people lump them in with chemical exfoliation because they tend to work in a similar way. But in enzyme exfoliants, these products typically include natural ingredients with naturally occurring enzymes. Chemical exfoliants and HAs and BHAs can be synthetic or naturally derived as well. But these products contain a specific type of enzyme that is extremely gentle. You guys know I have ultra sensitive skin and this is my personal favorite method for my regular bi-weekly exfoliation. Some people aren't really a fan because enzymes are an active ingredient and they can be kind of hard to stabilize, but I've personally seen great results using products like this. The way these work is the enzymes in these products work to break down the proteins that hold your dead skin cells together. The particles are very large so they can't really penetrate the skin and that's part of what makes them so gentle. So most commonly for ingredients you will see papaya, pineapple, pumpkin, and rice. These ingredients, pineapple and papaya in particular, tend to have great mattifying properties for the skin. So they are great ingredients to look out for if you are oilier. The most common form of enzymatic exfoliators are water activated powders. These are my personal favorite and I feel like if you are going to see benefits from an enzymatic exfoliator, it's probably going to be this because I feel like the ingredients are able to be stabilized a little bit better. You know, they're not mixed with other ingredients that are going to break them down over time before you even get a chance to use them because you do mix it with water in the palm of your hand to create a paste and then massage it into your skin from there. A few examples of these are the Tatcha Rice Enzyme Powder, which I just finished a small jar of and it is incredible. The Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant and Daily Superfoliant. A more Pacific also has their Treatment Enzyme Peel, which is another fantastic one. And Josie Marin actually also has a great one with some great acne fighting ingredients. A lot of these products say they can be used daily, but I personally like to limit them to two to three times a week max. But if you are looking for an exfoliant that you can use on a more regular basis, powder exfoliants are definitely a good one to look into as well as like the liquid chemical exfoliants. You've also got products like the Peter Thomas Roth Peeling Gel. That's one of those gels that you start to massage it into your skin and it actually like physically balls up under your fingertips. Peter Thomas Roth also has a pumpkin enzyme mask that is really great as well. It smells like pumpkin pie. So when it comes down to it, a big part of finding the right exfoliator for you is just going to come down to personal preference and experimenting. While I do have my favorite, I have products from each one of these categories that I have found and that I love and that work really well for my skin. When I was younger and I first started trying physical exfoliants, I found them all just way too rough for my sensitive skin and I was actually really afraid to exfoliate for quite a while because I just thought physical exfoliation was the only option out there and I thought none of them were going to work for my skin because they were all too abrasive. But I was just trying the wrong products. I had to find some that were gentle enough for me. So like with all skincare, there's definitely going to be some trial and error involved. And if you dive into it more, you'll actually realize a lot of products combine the different forms of exfoliation, whether that's a mix of two or all three of them. The Kate Somerville Exfolicate is a perfect example of this because it contains granules, but then it also has salicylic acid and fruit enzymes to all work together. Now really quickly before we wrap things up, I want to quickly touch on plastic microbeads because I've also received some questions about what microbeads are and why they are bad. Microbeads were first introduced in the 70s and they became extremely common and popular in face scrubs, soaps, and body washes. They are an effective way to exfoliate and they are manufactured to be perfectly spherical and round so they don't cause micro tears in your skin. And on top of that, they are extremely cheap to manufacture. So a lot of companies were loving using them. Now the issue is when you wash or exfoliate your face, Everything you use is getting rinsed down the drain and ultimately a percentage of those beads have ended up collecting in our rivers and oceans. Trillions of these beads have ended up in natural bodies of water and they don't break down. And they also absorb pollutants and small fish end up eating these microbeads and then bigger fish end up eating those fish and it's just very detrimental for our ecosystems all around. Thankfully the world has started to realize just how damaging these microbeads are and they have started banning them in a number of different different countries and have started producing alternatives like jojoba beads which I mentioned earlier. So not all beads in skincare are bad, it's just the plastic microbeads specifically. There are natural alternatives that will break down if they do end up passing through those filtration systems and ending up in the ocean. Like I said, I just wanted to quickly touch on that. I definitely urge you to do your own research on the legislation in your country and what ingredients you should be looking out for in your products if you want to avoid plastic microbeads, which you definitely should want to avoid them. <laughs> that is going to be it for today's video. I really 
really, really hope you guys found this video helpful and that it answered a lot of your questions that you had. Of course, as always though, if you do have additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I have been trying to respond to as many comments as I possibly can. And also in the description box, once again, everything will be linked. All of the products, some relevant information. I also did just get a professional chemical peel and I vlogged that process, so if you want to see that, it'll be linked as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and find it helpful. That seriously helps me out. And go follow me on social media. I am at Rianne on Twitter and Instagram. And hit that subscribe button down below if you're new to my channel. But thank you so much for spending this time with me today. As always, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye guys!